Hi there. Here's a triple dog dare you. Perhaps you've seen the Christmas time classic movie, A Christmas Story. It's one of my favorites, one of my family's favorites. While there are a lot of great moments in the movie, one scene drew a particularly large crowd. Best friends, Ralphie, Flick, and Schwartz um, were walking to school one frigid and snowy morning when an old discussion resumed. Will a tongue pressed on a frozen metal pole stick or not? Schwartz said it would, and Flick said, no way, it will not. So, with a crowd drawing around the flagpole, moments before school, Schwartz loudly dared Flick to go ahead and do it, if he was so brave. Flick, not altogether sure of his tongue stick position, stalled as long as he could until Schwartz called him out with the ultimate Verbal motivator. Are you kidding? Stick my tongue to that stupid pole, that's dumb. That's why I should know where to stick. You're full of it. Oh, yeah? Yeah! Well, I double dog dare you! No, it was serious. A double dog dare. What else was left but a triple dare you? And finally, the coup de grace of all dares, the sinister triple dog it. dare. I triple dog dare you! Schwartz created a slight breach of etiquette by skipping the triple dare and going right for the throat. All right, all right. Yeah, well, come on, smart ass, Julie. I'm going, I'm going. Flick's spine stiffened, his lips curled in a defiant sneer. There was no going back now. Of course, that is one of my favorite scenes in the entire movie. Challenges have a way of motivating at least some of us, most of us, I would say, especially if the challenge is toward a good result. I would like to triple dog dare you into a bit of what might seem at first foolishness, but really it is the unforgettable Apostle Paul type of foolishness. Many of us are frustrated amongst a church that does not recognize itself. You would say along with me that that is the cause for tremendous harm in the church today. Most of us would agree that the percentage of Christians who believe they have truly become actual new creations, no kidding, holy, blameless, faultless, and righteous is very low. And that is tragic. How can anyone truly enjoy the perfect intimacy God has achieved for us with himself when we've got a serious disagreement going on about our, our union with him? Further, how can we enjoy true fellowship within the church when we are unrecognizable to each other, if even to ourselves? The devil and this world have effectively disguised the sons and daughters of God even to themselves. We don't see. The cover-up, which cannot prevent our longing for the benefit of true fellowship nevertheless, it still frustrates the possibility of it. We can't have true fellowship without knowing who we are. We've been trained to settle for the outward appearance, even though we've been commanded and really encouraged against us, against it rather. 
So Paul writes to the Corinthians in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 16 through 19. So from now on, we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone and the new has come. All this is from God who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation, that God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting men's sins against them. And he has committed to us the ministry or the service, the giving of reconciliation. Surrendering to worldly identities then terribly injures us all. It's not normal. It doesn't work for us. We are, in fact, obscured and reduced to life by masquerade of pretending we are not what and who we, in fact, are. Imagine a day when um, you throw off the astounding fact of your Christian identity, the true identity, and masquerade as a pig in a pen, because the slaughterhouse is after cattle. Now, actually, you are neither one, but that's what it's like when a noble Christian accepts the lowly image of this world, pork or beef. It's a never-ending game that disguises us and keeps us playing dress-up. It's demonic, actually, and it's hurting us. A better fit, a, a, a more normal, spirit-led, and life-producing fit is to boast in the Lord. He has made us to be just like himself in righteousness, pure. Just like himself in holiness, perfect. In redemption, complete. See 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 30 and 31. <clears throat> Wherever you are, you are at all times recognized in the heavens as having become magnificent, very much like your Father. Those in the heavens see what we must know. Otherwise, we walk covered up and crippled. Here's my New Year's challenge. My triple dog dare you. Identify yourself to those who do not see you. If you were to say, I am a righteous man, in the hearing of a few friends, would you be accurate? You would. Would they be surprised? Would they be startled, perhaps? Probably. But would you be arrogant? Not at all, since you had nothing to do with what God has, in fact, done to you through Christ. Your boast would be accurate, and actually, we need it. We need to hear it. It's healthy to say it, and it's healthy to hear it. Or how about saying when you're with some friends, it's amazing that I am a, maybe in your case, a perfect daughter of God. I know that for sure you'll probably, you're going to get some looks, but you will be drawing back the ugly disguise that keeps you and your friends in a lie. Get out of that lie! Or, or what would happen if you asked a similar kind of group, which of us here is the most holy? That ought to bring about some eye-opening conversation, don't you think? But don't we need it? It may be uncomfortable at, at times because we are not used to identifying each other as we are in Christ, but rather as we appear in this world. We've accepted and grown used to this world's disguise and to this world's torture. Living in agreement with God sometimes means at least some, a little bit of discomfort, I know. While that has always been daring, it's also invigorating, especially on the inside, where God lives happily. You will be assisting yourself and others to the truth that makes free 
And that is enormously powerful and unforgettable. Begin telling people, at least occasionally, who you are. This, way, uh, this may well cause uh, something of a revolution amongst your friends, and they will likely ask you how you got that way. Would that be so bad? That's when the Spirit has a field day with you and with those around you. That is a great thing. Go for it. I triple dog dare you. See you later.